Donald the Repentless, just uh, another life of an inventory auditor episode. Now, the thing that I've been thinking about recently is, is the RM2 as bad as its reputation? Now, like I said, I've used it only a couple of times, and I do see some of the upsides with the RM2. There's, there's problems, there's things that still need to be worked out, kinks, you know. But the sort of water cooler chat talk that I've heard surrounding the RM2 is that it's mainly like older worker, you know, older employees like myself who were, were trained on the audit or trained on the RM1 that seem to have the most problems with the RM2. And those who are just coming on board who were trained on the RM2 have a tendency to like the RM2 more than they do the RM1. So in terms of the long run, I, I see the RM2 as having a place, um, being better than what the initial an analysis of it is at the moment. Um, you know, and as, as, as it goes on and they fix some of the bugs, fix some of the hardware problems, and start shipping out the RM2s in such a number that they replace the RM1, which we know is going to happen eventually. Um, my area manager was saying he was thinking it would take about a year or so, and that was a few months ago. But probably, you know, somewhere in maybe late 2017, the RM2 will be the standard device within Regis Inventory. And those of us who have, you know, of us who have gone like through the audits and the RM2, RM1s, will just have to get used to it. And the fact of the matter is, the, the keyboard is smaller, sure. But it's not something that is impossible to get used to. Um, it's just a matter of using it enough and getting enough practice with the RM2 that the keyboard becomes familiar. That's why someone like me, okay, talking about the RM1, was able to quickly transition to that is because in terms of its general design, it doesn't, it's basically just a slightly modified version of what went before it. Now this is slightly now this is more of a change from the RM1 to the RM2, but I don't necessarily see this as a problem. It's just something that you have to practice, like any other keyboard. I mean, if you suddenly found yourself with uh, there are different varieties. I, I don't remember the names of them now, but a different design than the traditional QWERTY design that most people are familiar with, you can get to the point where you can type just as fast with the unfamiliar keyboard as with the QWERTY keyboard. And that's the transition that Regis is going through right now. Um, like I said, I heard that they stopped shipping the RM2s out because of some, some problems with the hardware. Because, like I said, I heard that if you twist the detachable ring laser too hard, it breaks. Um, so a lot of the problem is just making the 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 lasers more rugged than they are right now, and that's probably a fairly simple fix from a an engineering standpoint. But one that is going to happen, and when they get this done, and when they get if there's any like software side problems, any fix you know patches and whatnot to fix that. I, I predict that the RM2 will be a fairly stable and usable device. Um, someone like me may, may not, it may not be my favorite. It might become my favorite. I mean, I remember when I first saw the um, RM1, I was a little concerned that maybe I... I wouldn't like it as much as I would the old audit units. But after a year or two of using 
the RM1, I, I was a fan. Um, because, like I said, it, was, it wasn't, wasn't too much of a, of a departure. It, it, was, it took a little time to get used to. And I predict that's going to be the case with the RM2. Um, it's not really become the main device of Art Reaches, but it will. And in time, all those people who are complaining about the RM1 now, I'm sorry, RM2 now, will, if they don't become fans, they will say, okay, this is usable. I can work with this. And that's basically the thing I, I wanted to come across, put across in this video today, is that, you know, you shouldn't judge the RM2 because it's still early in its life cycle. I mean... The RM2 had an eight year, well, it's still going, I mean, eight, nine, year, ten year life cycle from the, from the point that it was introduced back in 2008, I think. It may have been around a little before that, I don't know how much long, longer before that, but eight or nine years. Now, when you talk in terms of technology like that, eight or nine years is roughly the same as like, uh, console generation in video games so like I said I I'm not too critical of the RM2 right now because it's still in this sort of beta phase where they're getting feedback from the field where these are being used and they're finding fixes for whatever problems they might have right now but in terms of the keyboard, it's just a matter of folks getting used to it and using it on a regular basis until they've mastered it. Because like I said, the, the, the problems that are, that are with it now, you know, like the lasers and whatnot, that'll be fixed. I, I think that... Regis was on the right track in a lot of senses when it came to this design. I especially love, like I've said before, the detachable finger laser. I had this ideal in my head for one like that, but I didn't know that they had the, the batteries that could power that as small as the one that they actually use. I, I would have had like a wrist thing with a large battery, but... But the overall concept of the uh, the overall concept of the RM1, the overall design of the RM1 is actually pretty good. I think it is, anyways. So, like I said, that's all I can think of to say about this at this moment. Um, so I will end this here. After yeah, end this here. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it on social media. Uh, social media. And subscribe to my channel for more T uh, Life of an Inventory Auditor. This is Donald the Repentless signing off. Be awesome, everyone.